Hello and welcome. In this video I'm going to be going through the process of creating this paper cutting which is of Nagoji Temple in Tateyama which is in Chiba Prefecture in Japan. Uh, in this video I'll briefly be going through the process, the artistic process, but since I'm not really doing anything really new with it I thought I'd go through a bit more of uh, the journey I took to get to this temple and some of the pictures I took while I was there. So from this picture here you can see where Nagoji Temple is located in Japan. So it's on the eastern side relatively close to Tokyo. And zooming in a bit you can see uh, Tokyo there at the top and then to the right of that. So a bit east is Chiba City, the capital of Chiba Prefecture and then Nagoji Temple further south there uh, where the red dot is located. So um, the station at uh, the temple or to get to the temple Nakofu Nakata is very small it's a very rural area so not a lot of foreigners. Um, if anyone were to venture to this area I would recommend knowing at least some Japanese because no one around there really speaks English. So if you get lost or something, you're kind of out of luck. And so here's some of the signs. A lot of them do have some English on them, but some of them don't. So again, if you can't read any Japanese, then it's going to be difficult. But uh, it was very, very hot. So I had to stay close to the shade wherever I could. And it was a bit of a walk, um, not too bad, about 20 minutes from the station to the temple. Uh, so just walking along the streets here, you can go up at the top there, you can kind of see the temple starting to emerge. And here again, it's getting a bit closer. So obviously it was up a bit, so I had to walk up some stairs, but I was really excited to see it and finally get there. I've been planning this for quite a while, and so as you're walking up here, you can see a bit of the, the seascape and a bit of a better view of the city. And so this is one part of the temple. Um, there were a few buildings, which is always an added bonus that there's more structure. And so a bit of view from behind the one temple, you can again see the seascape there. So walking around the first building, then you come up con come upon the pagoda, a bit more of the architecture there. So this is a relatively small temple, not a lot of people there in general, but uh, for me, it's the less people the better. Um, the more tucked away, the better. I, I really like those kind of rural areas where there's not a lot of people. Um, I do get some looks because I'm a six foot four Caucasian, blonde hair, Canadian, so um, it's more just curiosity. I've never really felt any animosity or anything. People are just wondering what I'm doing there at a small temple like this, but uh, anytime I talk to anyone, they're fairly polite, especially when they realize I can speak enough Japanese to communicate. So coming down, seeing the pagoda again. So this is just past the pagoda there. There's a couple more structures. On the right there is the bell. And so going past uh, that area and coming around uh, to where I took the picture from. So that's the place where you're um, washing your hands and your mouth uh, just to kind of try and purify yourself. So technically I kind of entered backwards through the temple, but uh, didn't even really know this existed before I went in, otherwise I would have came through this way. Here's a short clip of just the ambiance of the area. And then a bit further down, the entrance gate. And so 
from there, we will get back to the paper cutting. And so as always, um, for this one, this is obviously one of many pictures I took at this temple. I thought I took enough, but um, as usual, none of them were quite perfect. When I saw this view, I kind of it inspired me. I knew I was this would likely be one that I would take a pic, that I would make a paper cutting from, but um, it kind of cut off here. But I thought I really wanted to get the um, the underside of of this part here with the roof, so I had to cut and paste a a couple pictures and then kind of blend them in for the drawing portion. So. This was the picture I was working from, and here's the drawing, and so this will be the black layer. So as always, just going to draw on top of this original picture, the Sharpie, standard Sharpie. knowing the whole time that it needs to be connected as one piece um, so all the black parts are connected so I can cut it into one piece of paper and then attach the colored pieces in behind. So this gives a bit of an idea of what the, the black layer will look like. And then there's kind of a lot going on in these areas here and here. The colored pieces will help to kind of differentiate the areas so it doesn't look as hectic, yet still being able to have kind of a lot of the detail here, here and with the leaves and in behind. So starting off the paper cutting here, as always I have my drawing and I've taped uh, the black layer in behind, which I always do first, so I'm going to be cutting through both layers of paper with the knife on the cutting mat here. So the black layer is fairly thick, uh, it's a 220 GSM, it's a Fabriano paper. I've been using this for the last few paper cuttings that I've done. It's uh, it's thick enough so that the colored pieces attach easily and it doesn't really compromise the paper at all, but um, it's also easy enough for the knife to go through when I'm cutting, so uh, sometimes it takes a bit to find just the right paper, but, uh, but this one's worked well. So with all the paper cuttings, as usual, I'm going to start with the smaller pieces first which is usually the leaves, um, and then work out. Other than that, after the leaves are done, probably move to this section here, and then just in general, do all the smaller pieces first, and then do the larger pieces at the end. of the leaves there. So you can see there those leaves that have cut out and how big they are. So at this point, to save my neck and my back, I'll be tilting my table up and it'll allow me to, to do these a lot faster than with the table laying flat like this. So jumping ahead a little bit here, uh, I've done a lot of the leaves. You can see those ones there, and then these ones over here, some of the pagoda there. And the other leaves. So, let's do 
some of the scales on the dragon here. And as always, it's all by hand. I would never ever use lasers. Someone, a couple of people have thought that I did, but if I were to use lasers for this, it would render the whole thing pointless. So. All these cuts by hand. So, give you an idea of the size of some of the small ones. So again, so I've done all these, so these are obviously the smallest parts, so I'm starting to work on this area here, again just some really small ones, and then from this point on I'll just keep kind of working through the small ones, I'll probably do this portion next, and then the leaves over here, so I'm just getting all that done, and then I guess finishing it off, so even though it doesn't really look like it, it's almost half done at this point just in terms of time because obviously the smaller pieces take the most time <clears throat> or it takes more time to do more small pieces than it does these bigger pieces so keep working on it and see where we get so as I mentioned before I have a drawing table that tilts up so it makes it easier for me to cut but um, Here's where we are in total. I'm just going to tuck this under there so I can show. So all the little pieces that I cut will fall down here, get trapped here. And so that's today, what I've done so far. So jumping ahead, fair bit here almost done the black layer, so that's what I've done so far, so kind of see how small some of those are. I've left a couple of, <clears throat> a couple of cuts just for the end so I can show how to finish this off. <clears throat> so the last few ones I've done are these, these big pieces here. And obviously, as mentioned, I started by doing all these smaller ones around here and around here. So, just finish this off. So the hardest part, <clears throat> one of the hardest parts, is knowing where one cut ends and one begins. It's a lot harder when I'm sitting this far away from it. As mentioned, usually my face is about six inches from where I'm cutting, so it's easier to see. But, uh, but also near the end here, having to kind of hold down pieces as I'm cutting so it doesn't move at all.
So rather than having to do all of that, finding those little pieces, because for the little cuts, I should say, I'll be pulling it all out. Pull this out in sections. And so the reason the word sky is there, um, in the actual picture, this is all foliage, trees and behind, but I thought it would look better as with a bit of sky here. And so it was just to remind myself uh, when I was drawing to just leave that part blank. And then obviously when I'm putting in the colored pieces behind the black piece, it will be blue. So as I'm here in this area, I'll just show these. So these, these pieces here are probably the smallest one, <clears throat> smallest ones for this piece. So those are very, very tiny there. Usually if the, <clears throat> if the top layer comes out clean, the bottom layer should. So that should be it. So I have everything, and <clears throat> as mentioned before, it's uh, 
it looks um, really busy, I guess. There's just a lot going on. Hard to differentiate where one object starts and one begin or one starts and one ends. But the color, the colored pieces will help that tremendously. So it'll be a lot more clear what's what here. So from here, I'll make some photocopies of this and then, as always, I'll cut out the individual colored pieces, glue them to the back, and that'll be that. So jumping ahead here, uh, put in the majority of the color. Um, there's still large gaps here uh, and here in the trees and the sky, but those won't take long. Uh, to put in because I'll just likely do one big piece but um, from behind so you can kind of see I've cut out each individual piece to fit in so for example this one here I cut out to fit into this spot and so some of them you can see their colored paper behind some of them are white the reason for that is, so for this one, specifically it's watercolor that I've made. So, you can see there. And obviously the watercolor on one side is the paint, one side is just more paper. Um, so this is one that I'll use. So I've used this before for other pieces, but um, just looking through all the watercolors that I have. I think it'll look good here. So I'll cut out pieces to fit in here and in here. And then for the posts here, it's also white here, but that's because this paper with a really nice texture is really thin. So you can kind of see through there. So if I weren't to put a second piece of white paper in behind, here. Then any other piece I put after that. So if this one were to go over top, you kind of see through it there. But uh, yeah, so I'm just going to add the color pieces here, and those will be all watercolor, and then we'll be finished. So here we are. It's all finished. As mentioned before, I think the color kind of helps to differentiate the different shapes here and different objects. I think that turned out well, and overall I'm fairly happy with it. Uh, coincidentally, as an added bonus, I have uh, finished another couple pieces during the time that I spent uh, making the video for this one. So here is the Imperial Palace in Tokyo. Uh, also from a picture I took last summer when I visited Japan. And another piece, this is Choki in Temple in Kawagoe in Saitama Prefecture. Also from a picture I took last summer when I was in Japan. Uh, if you'd like to purchase these or any other of my works, please feel free to email me. I'll leave the uh, email in the description for this video. Or you can also visit JapanesePaperCutting.com and see what's available there. So as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.